something doesn't happen soon, I'm going in there. I'm going to say something to him. You dare. We've been here since Daddy. half past. Quarter to. Half past. He's only solicited a mick. Oh, flaming God, you have to get down on your knees. Right. Hey, you screwed up for me, Joe, so I want him on my side. I could screw it up. What do you mean? I just don't like people messing you about. You don't get anywhere with people if you let them walk all over you. If I was the sort of fellow that did that, I wouldn't be sat here with a court case hanging over me, would I? Hey, we were here before Neanderthal man. Anyways, pay to be on your side. What do you think we do all day? Sit around polishing our nails, waiting for him to spare some of his valuable time. My time's as valuable as his. No, it isn't, babe. It is to me. Should see what he's charging for his. Hey, 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 watch it, watch it. Why, what's it gonna do? It's gonna win me a bet, son. That's what. Rod! Out the back, love. Dad is not doing much yet, is it? What's this? I'll give you three guesses. It's a soldering iron. Very good, your mother, you know. Very observant. Any, any breakfast going? Granddad, it's dinner time. Well, any dinner going, then? I thought you ain't coming. Have you ever known your granddad missed Pancake Day? Come on, mate. Tell him the annual pancake contest. I'd have come back from China for that. This is my winner tenor off your dad day. It's not this year, it is. In fact, this year, I have a little something special tucked up my sleeve, Papa. Me too, son, me too. I just trust that yours hasn't got anything to do with that pile of flagstones out there at the front. What pile of flagstones? You know, the flagstones for the path through to the shops. Council dropped them off this morning. Talking about shops, how's the negotiations going? Negotiations are going very, very nicely, thank you. So is this your uh, secret weapon? Yes, <laughs> I'll tell you what this is. This is a genuine four carat Spanish paella pan. Only four carats. No, no, Dee Dee, that's for diamonds. This, let me tell you, was a present. From a dying soldier. From a dying soldier. I dragged him out from under gunfire up in the hills behind Barcelona. All he had was his gun. And his faithful paella dish. So you could use it for the shield. That's exactly what he was doing, Tony. That's exactly what he was doing. They were very poorly armed, them young communist guerrillas. So uh, what are we talking about now, Dad? The Spanish Civil War, thickhead. And as a token of his gratitude, he said to me, Cyril, he said, Cyril, me amigos. Hang on. The Spanish Civil War, 1930... 1938? Thereabouts, yeah. Well, you were only 13 in 1938. Hey, wow, same age as me, Grandad. Yeah, well, the war dragged on, didn't it, Franco and that? There was pockets of resistance all over. For years, for years, the war dragged on. So you were 13 when you were fighting in Spain, Grandad? Sound? Yeah, well, maybe not quite as young as that. Or maybe not at all. <laughs> so, uh, we've now established that this, like, is a genuine paella pan. Not just a pile of pan, this is an infinitely adaptable pile of pan. And this is going to make the biggest pancake this year. What, in that? Never. You may as well concede defeat now. You never get any better than that. Oh, no. Do you want a bet, then? Uh, you've already done that. Come on, come on. Do you want to up the stakes now? Come on. Do you know what the world record is for the world's largest pancake? 32 feet, 11 and a quarter inches. So what? Our rules say that you have to toss the pancake and you can never toss a pancake of that size. Oh, no. Tony, go and find me something big to put that mixture in and make it as big as you can find. So, uh, what size was you thinking of? Oh, oh, and don't forget, get all the eggs out of the Moby. I want the lot. <laughs> better than target cup. I'm relying on them. Wait. What was you using that soldering iron for? Flower decoration. Have a coffee, Dad. Dee Dee, give this man a coffee and keep your nose out till I'm finished, right? They are, Dad. Leave Ron to play with his toys. Yeah, well, no, I mean, he'll never make it. Never. Oh, no. We'll just see them, won't we? It is dinner time next. Look, I'll do the talking, all right? So, what am I doing here then? Moral support. Listen, I'm the one who knows about the law. I have done jury service. You didn't do anything. I kept my eyes open. That's not Mr. Okay. Johnson. Sorry to keep you waiting. Take a seat. Sorry. 
Everything's running late. My name's Fowler. Mr. McGinn, who was handling your case, has unfortunately been taken ill, so I'll be looking after you. Someone could have told us during the hour. Pardon? That's how long we've been waiting out there, an hour. An hour? God, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that's the one thing about British justice you can always rely on. It'll take forever. Now then, do you mind if I eat my sandwiches? Right then. Now, I've been brought up to date with your case, so there's nothing to worry about. You had a chat with Mr. McGinn last time about pleading mitigation. Yeah, that's right. You see, Mrs. Johnson... It is Mrs. Johnson. It is, yeah. This is what we call an either-way sort of case. A what sort of case? An either-way case. There was a time when GBH was automatically dealt with by the Crown Court. No choice. Now it can just as well be subject to summary jurisdiction. That's the Magistrate's Court. And that's what we want. So what will happen on Friday is we'll go through an application for mode of trial. That's when I stand up and do my spiel about what a nice, honest, upstanding citizen your husband is. Then the clerk of the court will ask you what your decision is. Magistrate's court or Crown Court? What's the difference? Well, apart from the obvious, judge and jury, etc., it's basically a matter of sentencing. The maximum penalty the magistrates can impose for this offence is strictly limited. A six-month custodial sentence, or £2,000, plus up to 2000 compensation, plus costs, of course. No... Look, don't worry. That's the maximum penalty. I'm not suggesting for a moment it'll be anything like as bad as that. What about the Crown Court? Five years custodial sentence. Unlimited fine. Two, five, eleven, double two, twenty. That's two hundred and ten. We're definitely going to send one to Paula Hennigan. What? Well, Paula Hennigan and Valentine? Oh, yeah. You seen her legs in a gym skirt? Best thing since sliced bread, Paula Hennigan. <laughs> Makes my back all funny. And other places, of course. Yeah. What happened to Lisa Jenkins then? Who? 190! It isn't, it is! What? 190? Yeah. Yeah, you big cheese. Well, it's something like that. hundred and something. Well, I'm winning anyway. Yeah, rubbish I'm left you. Not as rubbish as you. Look, anyway, it's a waste of money. What is? Send the Valentine to Paul Lennigan. She's never gonna look at you, is she? She might. Yeah, she got six forms sniffing around after her. Have you seen her legs, though? Got a bit of a thing about her legs, haven't you? Yeah. I'm more uh, interested in her other bits. What other bits? You know. What are the bits? Well, specifically, what are the bits? Going to the Vogue magazine. I haven't got one, now. My mum found it. Yeah, well, I told you not to keep it under the mattress, didn't I? Um, if you're sending the one, then I will. Do you fancy it, then? It's not your business, is it? Well, you're going to play there. Eh? I haven't. <laughs> Look like a beatin'. You do, don't you? You fancy it. Listen, no chance. She's got an eye on anyone. I've seen her. I've seen the lust in her eyes. I reckon she's gonna send me one. For oh, Valentine. Yeah, I reckon she'll get a bar ten this year. Ten? You do need extra maths lessons. Since when did not on a not on me ten? Better get more than you. Yeah, I bet you don't. How much? A quid. Two. Two quid says I get more Valentines than you. All right, then, you know. Yeah. So that's about it then, Mr. Johnson. That's basically the procedure. You elect to be tried by the magistrates, you plead guilty, I put forward a plea of mitigation, and with any luck, you get off with a smack on the back of the hand and a nominal fine. That's all very reassuring and it sounds great and everything, but it's a lot of crap, isn't it, because I'm not guilty. So why the hell should I pretend to be? To play the system? Just to get off lightly? I don't want to get off lightly, I want to get off. And I'm not paying a fine for something I haven't done. And I'm not letting them hang a criminal record around my neck either because I'm innocent. I'm afraid not, Mr. Johnson. You did exactly what you're charged with doing. Technically, you are guilty. Oh, it was me out there on the rub, was it? It was me trying to break into another fellow's house. I appreciate. Mick. No, he's the criminal, not me. No, I'm sorry. It's all cockeyed, this. It sticks in the throat. Is this what you call justice, is it? No, Mr. Johnson, this is the law. And the law states that if you inflict grievous bodily harm on a fellow citizen, you must pay the penalty. My job is to make sure we get the lightest penalty that the law allows. He's right, Mick. Which is why I suggested pleading mitigation. Oh, there's nothing to mitigate. I'm not guilty. Now, look, let me lay this down the line. If you do what I say, you'll be all right. If you don't, there's a risk you'll come up before a jury. And to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't give you a cat in hell's chance. You attacked this guy, Brady. Oh, he was on the rob. You chased him into a neighbor's garden. 
You continued the attack. Look, I was holding on to him until the police got there. How tall are you, Mr. Johnson? Six foot two. How much do you weigh? How about 15 stone? Well, the guy you attacked, this Kenneth James Brady, he's five foot seven and weighs slightly under 10 stone. A clever prosecuting counsel would carve you up, Mr. Johnson. And all the mitigating circumstances in the world wouldn't do you an ounce of good once that jury takes their first look at you. What's that supposed to mean? You know what he means. I'm sorry to be so brutal, but there's no nice way of saying it, is there? The moment you stand up in that dock, no matter how liberal they are, no matter how often they've refused to buy South African apples or how kind they are to their budgies, that jury will be completely blinded by the colour of your skin. You're 50% guilty before they've even heard the charge. Take my advice, Mr. Johnson. Do it the easy way. Forget your principles. Keep your head down. Plead guilty. And you'll be OK. Power driver. It's got to be something with a bit of stylish revenge. Start coming over them cups. You found anything yet? Yeah. It's got to be twice as colour this time. He's got a lot of style, man, Maxi. I've got a load of Valentines I whipped off your dad last year's stock. What? Oh, sends him a Valentine? No, pretend he was from Margaret. He'd be dead embarrassed. Oh, that's a forge right now. Hey, Brilliant, brilliant, that. Try it. It's easy. Come on, Ben, I'll show you them cards. Hey, what about me? You've got it well, Sus Tugger. Just keep staring. Stop the car. I can't stop on a bend. Stop the car. Why? I want to talk. Mass is bringing the kids back with two. I can't say what I want to say in front of them. All right, then. Say it. You're the most pig-headed man I've ever met. You knew all that when you married me. That's why I married you. But this time, lover, just this once. Look, I can't do it, Jules. I can't stand up there and say I'm guilty. Not for you, not for anyone. You've got to, babe. There's no choice. You're the one who always gets so uptight about rocking the boat. Sit down, Josie. Don't make a fuss, Josie. Do what the nice gentleman says, because he's got letters after his name and he knows what's best for us. Josie. But this time, you're going to rock the boat so bad, we're all going to fall out and drown. Look, I know, but... It won't be so bad, lover. Just don't let them ever get to you, that's all. And on Friday, it looked like you're in the dock. For you and me, we know you won't be there, not really. And when they ask, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty, you just swallow your principles. Injustice that's bugging you. What about the injustice of being banged up in a prison cell? Or being destroyed by death for doing just what anybody else in their right mind would have done? So you just open your mouth and say it. Guilty. Dead easy. It's just a word, babe. You've got to say it. Because it's the difference between staying afloat and drowning. Yeah, I know. You're dead good at this, aren't you? What? Keeping a cab on. You could suck for England, you. I'm not sulking. You are. In fact, you could turn professional. Look, I'm not sulking, all right? All right, back off. It's only a joke, you know. I'm on your side, you know that. I mean, he was well out of line. Hey, Jax, where are you? This one's for you, princess. Hey, hey, hang on, we gotta mess you that first. Hey, you haven't tossed it yet, Dad. No cheating. Hey, come on, Mike, give us a hand. And you, Jax, come on. 
Oh, no, it's freezing. I'm going in. Uh, just a minute, madam. Your granddad's made this one especially for you. No, oh, she's all right. You go inside and have a quick warm-up, princess. Hey, and bring out the peanut butter. See? I haven't forgotten. Peanut butter for our jacks. Golden syrup for our mic. Are you ready, Mike? Ready. Ready for the countdown. And one, two, three. Ah! <laughs> I don't think that turned. It did. It did. You saw it, Mike. No, it didn't. Well, who says he's supposed to? The rule says you've got to toss it, and we toss it. It doesn't say anything about turning it. No, it's got to, hasn't it? Hang on, hang on. Let's have a look. Come on, it'll be frozen before Jack gets it. <laughs> That's it. Right, let's see you try to do better. Oh, yeah? Right, lads, let's get this pancake machine greased up. Come on, Jax, your pancake's ready. Do you want half, mate? No, thanks, Grand. I don't think I'll pass. I'm not hungry. Everybody's got to be hungry on Pancake Day. It's in the rules. Hey, you lads, what's that oil? Hey, Mike, give us a hand over here. <laughs> Is she all right? No, not really. I'll have a word with her if you like. Oh, no, it's all right, Dad. It's something between her and Ron. No, it's all right, love. Any help I can give at all. You know me. Yeah, I know, Dad, but... Well, I... grandparents do sometimes come in useful. She can talk to me. Everybody ready? <laughs> right, chaps, very gently. One, two, three. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. And granddad. <laughs> <laughs> the culinary event of the year. The attempt on the Liverpool all-covers pancake record. <laughs> To something when you start lecturing me about being sensible. Nothing to do with being sensible, babe. This is survival. Yeah. How'd you get on? Oh, I am Mark. Where's the kids? Watching telly. Oh, I'll take the ice cream in for them, will you, babe? Right. I've made some pancake mixture. Oh, you're a doll. So how'd it go then? Not so good. Even looking on the brighter side, it's going to be a fine first cost. Going to be up to you in debt. Even I knew when you weren't. I'm not joking, Mars. This is debt on top of debt. I've got debt coming up my ears. So what the hell are we going to do? Make some money. Don't I know it? Hiya. Listen. What would you say I was best at? Like that. Well, no, seriously. What would you say to my one real talent? Selling, I suppose. Right. And I'm not good at it. Do you know what you made of the car boot sale? Thirty pounds out of nothing. I started thinking, well, why work my butt off for all these other people? Shop, catalogue company, club. I could be working for myself. Doing what? Selling. A market store. Are you serious? Are you? Let's do some research. Then we'll do some research. Hey! Uh, you've got to toss it first. The rules. Oh, okay, stick to the rules. OK, I haven't forgotten. Right, everybody, you ready for this? Tony, you all right there? Togger, Benno, Michael. Right, now, listen. On the count of three, very gently. You ready? One. Two. Hang on, let's break it up in the middle. We'll get it level. Get it level. Oh, no, Benno, will you get that eye? Come on. One, two. Oh, Dad, it's sucking in the middle. Come on, one, two, three. Oh. Dad, the salt is melted. I had noticed. I told you it wouldn't work, son. The minute I seen that soldering iron, I knew you was doomed. Third year in a row. Never mind. You can settle up with me later. So anyway, I approached it very delicately again last night. You no know, skirting round. Subtlety in that. You what? Subtlety. Yeah, yeah, but what was your rabbit and on about? Well, this holiday. Only things are a bit dodgy with my mum at the moment. You know, after finding that magazine. So I'm just keeping out of her way. So, uh, your mum hasn't definitely said yet, then? Well, she hasn't definitely said no, either. Same with mine. Just have to keep on trying. Well, I am doing my like, but... Nice one. <laughs> Just stick some jam on it, it'll be all right. <sighs> you know, I reckon Captain Taylor's gonna send me a valentine. Yeah. I reckon I'll get one of some of them girls in free sea. They're all mad about me. Yeah? Yeah. <sighs> Want the brains tested, mate? And their eyes. 
I reckon I'll get one of Suka Van, I don't know. Oh, you reckon? Yeah. Suka Van is class, mate. She's not gonna look at a divvy like you. She already has done. Hey, one mention of Tammy, I had to eat out my hands. Well, if that's what you fancy. Sounds a bit pervy to me. Are you call her perv? Me perv? Hey, pack her in, perv. Oh. oh. Anyway, Suka Van is not as class as Paul Renegan. Hey, you do fancy her, don't you? Paul Renegan, look. She's all right, like. Oh, I'll tell her for you then. Hey, don't dip. <laughs> what time did you say your mum was coming back? <laughs> Left over stock from last year, did a bit dusty, lad. Like. Bit jammy, you know. <laughs> I was thinking, do you know this revenge with man, Maxie? Well, we could send these to his missus with rhymes in. I don't know any rhymes. Yeah, you do. Who else is a red bar to brew? Make some up. I dream about you day and night. I love your teeth, they're so white. Oh, that's good, Dad. Put that one in. Think of another one now. They're all the same, these. Doesn't matter. We can put different poems in. I like your hair, I like your lips, but most of all, I like your hip. <laughs> this is going to be brilliant, this. Driving mad with jealousy. He thinks she's got all these fellas sniffing after her. Hey, my Maxie finally goes barking mad. The Valentine's Day massacre. <laughs> Fernley Whittingstall takes us on a tour of more outlandish menus in TV dinners next on Living. My dad. Have I got any? It's my swamp for our Jeff. I'm just going upstairs a minute. God, I look awful. Creature from a black lagoon. Do I really look this bad? A bit tired. Mm, I was up for hours with Thomas last night. I don't know what's wrong with him. It's flat out now. Oh, wish I was. Look like Valentine's, those. All 15 of them. Valentine's? Oh, no, it's not Valentine's Day, is it? I thought that wasn't until next week. No. I have to get a max one. Can't stand silky silences. Looks like you've done all right, then. What's this? The Margaret Clements Fan Club. Olden branch. No. Liverpool branch? No, they're for you. Me? All of them? Oh, I get it. This is a Max joke. Look at the writing. That's him trying to look illiterate. <laughs> Fifteen Valentine's cards. Bit OT team for Max. <laughs> What's 
What's this? Case, do you see that wooden rectangular thing there? Well, that's called a door, it's for knocking on. I said, what's this? What does it look like? That's German writing, isn't it? And you never even opened it. You that desperate for something to do, you're scrabbling through waste paper baskets now. That's horrible, Alex. I think that's dead me. Well, why? It's not going to net. He went out and brought that especially. He's breaking his heart over you. Yeah, well, it happens. It's called growing up. Yeah, well, I think it's mean. I really like German. Well, you go out with him then. And what if he asks me? I think you'll take true you. Look, go shut the door. Go ahead, shut the door. Listen, two people write. Well, they don't just go off each other at the same time, like half past two next Wednesday, all right, for you. It's just not like that. I mean, it'd be dead easy if it was, like, but it's not. Someone always starts cooling off first, and the cruel thing to do is let it drag on. So it's inevitable. Someone will always get hurt in the end. I do feel bad about Owen Case, but it was like... But it was like a load of gill coming back through the letterbox at me. That card. I just wish he'd find someone new and be happy. So do us a favour, eh? Chuck it back out. OK. Must have got a job a lot. I dream about you day and night. I love your teeth. They are so white. Not one of his better efforts. Haven't yours yet? No, I haven't got any. None? Oh, second post. You'll be inundated. I doubt it. There's only Kieran and he doesn't really go in for all that. He thinks it's soppy, you know, cards and flowers and that. Beloved, very gorgeous Pat, I'm really glad you are not fat. I like your hair, I like your lips, but most of all, I like your hips. It's really scraping the bottom of the barrel, isn't he? You know, you must have got a lady from the office to do this, so I wouldn't recognise the handwriting. Ugh. Ugh. Jam. Jam. Raspberry jam. Oh, I see. I thought it was odd. I mean, even Max can write better dog rule than this. This is next door. Mr Dixon. Good God, no, I hope not. <clears throat> No, the kids. This is retaliation for all that paper cut business. This is guerrilla warfare, stage two. What are you going to do? I'm going to bide my time, that's what I'm going to do. Hang on a minute. There isn't one from Max in this lot. Well, you didn't send him one. That's different. Well, perhaps he forgot as well. He's not allowed to forget. <laughs> Message for you, Sam. You don't have to be here till one. That means I'll be working through till nine. Well, you weren't planning on going out tonight, were you? Oh, well, might as well get undressed. Have a few more hours, Kip. Um, is Jeff up? You're joking, aren't you? He won't serve us till dinner time. On Valentine's? Are you kidding me? You want to see if he's got one? Looks like a biggie, too. Yeah. I'm talking about Valentine's. Oh, Dad. It's from Owen, isn't it? Yeah, well, I told Katie to put it in the bin. She did. Listen, love, I'm not trying to interfere or anything, but me and your mum will... Why don't you have a chat with him? Try and sort something out. There's nothing to sort out. It's over now. He's a nice lad, though, and straight as a die. Just a minute. I don't like the way you treat him. He thinks the world of you, you know. Listen to yourself. I don't believe you. Look, Sam. Dad, you threw him off the clothes. You didn't have one night's way to say about the lad. That was before I knew him. At least that was one good thing of our own. At least we knew him. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, this new fella, you haven't seen Simon Sandlin. I mean, what's his name? Tim. Tim what? Tim Darby. Well, at least that's a start. So why haven't you brought him up? Are you ashamed of us or something? No. So are you ashamed of him? I'm not ashamed of anyone. Has he got a tin leg or three years or something? Dad, what do you want me to do? Bring him home to meet the folks? This is 1991, not 1951. I'll do the introductions when I'm ready. Sorry, son. It was only a question. Yeah, well, it was a very load of question, Dad. So, where do you want me to throw this away then? Please. Sorry about that. I did throw it away, but he fished it out again. It's all right. It's all sorted now. Can I borrow your nail varnish? Yeah, if you want. You 
Is that from him, your new boyfriend? Is he nice? Well, I wouldn't be going out with him if he wasn't, would I? What does this look like? Dead sophisticated. Yeah, he's brilliant. And he's got a brilliant car. I mean, he just knows about everything. He's into sports and all kinds of stuff. What sort of stuff? Well, just everything. Sam? Don't you think this looks too severe, though? Have you ever... Well, you know, actually done it? Done what? You know, it. You shouldn't be asking me questions like that. Have you, though? No. But well, I'm seriously thinking about it, though. Only don't tell me Mum and Dad ever. That's just between me and you. I never even said it. Never even said what? It's dead nice, this colour. What is it? Just some cheapo stuff from the market. You can have it if you want. Can I? Do you think I look any older? Do you want to look older for? Well, I just sort of want to look... Well, I want to look as if I know about things. I'm not just like some stupid kid. Aren't you scared? What of? Scared of... Well, actually doing it. I'd be dead embarrassed me. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Not if it was someone that made you feel... Well, not if it was with someone that you really trusted. Just keep your eyes shut. When? When you're doing it. Casey, what are you talking about? Well, I don't know, do I? I don't know if you've got to keep your eyes open when you're supposed to shut them. He's going to laugh at me, isn't he? I don't think there's any rules. I bet there are. There's rules for everything. On the films, they always keep their eyes shut when they're kissing. I know about that. I was just wondering about the other. Like, maybe it'd be less embarrassing if you could shut your eyes. And lie back and think of England. It's not funny. I've got to know about these things. Everybody still thinks I'm a baby. It's rotten being the youngest. Yeah, and it's not so great being the eldest. I mean, I have to face all your battles, don't I? Yeah, well, everybody laughs at me. Yeah, well, I'm not laughing at you, honest. When are you seeing him next? I see him every day in work, don't I? No, I mean, when are you going out with him next? Tonight. Only don't tell me Dad. Oh, on Friday. Wish I could see him. Well, you might one day. No, we're going on this big, nice house, me, Margaret, Ronnie and all the fellas. Where are you going? I don't know, yeah. I mean, we'll probably go the bowling alley again and then on to a club. Only, please, don't tell me, Dad, this can be our own little secret. I mean, I don't want him nosing about. No, I'm saying, I promise. Do you think I should wear it up or down tonight? Is it dark or fair? Dark. Can I do my fingernails as well? Yeah, if you want. How old is he? Only don't spill it, eh? Shy, the boyfriend. Oh, you will one day. Never even got a Valentine's card. Are you expecting any, like? Not really, no. All the boys in our year are dead stupid. They act like little kids. There's a boy in the fifth year. He's got freckles. He's really nice. I stand near him at the bus stop sometimes. I kind of push him up the queue or down it, you know, whichever just to get close to him. It's a bit old for me, though. I don't think he even knows I'm there. Oh, well, never mind. This time next year, they'll have to hire a fleece of vans for all your Valentine's cards. I just want to do. You want one van full? No, just one card. What do you think, Kate? Up? Or down? Hey, come on, go and have breakfast. Hey, Jax, here a minute. Come in, sit yourself down. Hey, what's this? It's a cookery. A what? A cookery. It's what the Gurkhas use. I got it off a fella up in the Punjab. It's jargon off, isn't it? <laughs> Wouldn't be much good if it was blunt, would it? They're very useful to me on my various travels, dealing with wild herdsmen up in Afghanistan. Saved my life several times. How long are you going to keep this up, sweetheart? Keep what up? Not talking to anyone. I'm talking to you, aren't I? What about your dad? I don't see you talking to him. Yeah, well, that's his fault. Anyway, he shouldn't have done it, should he? Oh, yeah, well, well, we all do something that we shouldn't do sometimes, don't we? Like going to a party and telling your dad you were going swimming. Well, you can't go on punishing him forever. Look, love, we've always been good mates, haven't we? You and me, special mates. Yeah, Grandad. So I'm going to tell you a story. This kukri. I got this off the most stubborn old devil you ever met, an Indian fella. Wouldn't speak to his daughter, because he was a Hindu, right? And she went off and married a Muslim. He went flaming bananas. We had to wrestle this off him before he sliced it in two with it. Well, never spoke to her again. 
couple of years later, she was dead, ruptured appendix. So we never got the chance to put things right. Do you see what I'm getting at? Oh, are yeah, Grandad. Don't cut off your nose to spite your face. No, Grandad. Because that's what you are doing. Look, just answer me this one question. This swimming business. Your mum says you're refusing to go training. You've refused to go for a month. Now, who's hurting by that? Who's suffering? You are. Well, yeah, Grandad. And we don't want that, do we? Now, off you go and be extra special and nice to your dad. Tell you what, get your swimming things together, get on your bike and get down to them baths and get a morning's training in. That's my girl. I'm glad we had this little chat. Special mates, eh? Oh, yeah, Grandad. <laughs> Evening. What time is it? Half ten. Crack a door, no one gets up this early, half ten. Hey, there's a card here for you. A what? Looks like a Valentine's card to me. Valentine's card? How many? One. One, is that all? How many are you expecting? Hey, who do you reckon it's from? What's her name? That's it's Hacken. Oh, very nice. Got good taste, hasn't she? Give us it back. In card to me and Jeff, not in fellas. <clears throat> Look, it's private, give us it back. Give me back, Sam. Not just a wind up, that's all. Dad, can I use the phone a minute? I beg your pardon? Can I use the phone a minute? No, I did hear you the first time, but since when did you ask me when you can use the phone? I meant in private. Can I use the phone privately for a minute? Dad, do you want a cup of tea? I don't. Why don't you use the phone box, eh? Phone box? Yeah. Anyone I know? I want to find out. Dad, I'm just going out for a minute. Shut that door. I like living on platform one at Lime Street here. Ah, oh, makes your heart bleed, doesn't it? Homeless and unloved. So what's all this then? Another gripping episode of the Marathon Cobb, is it? Oh, look, just shut up. I've had my granddad's whistling on to me for hours. There stinks in that fan of his as well. Oh, well, that's the good old natural smell of feet, that. He was doing his own routine of aim. Special mate, eh, princess? And then he makes me sound as though I'm out of bread or something. So, what was it all in aid of? Oh, just a load of the usual. This is hurting you more than it's hurting your dad's stuff. I mean, what's he like? He thinks the sun shines out of you. I know, but he's just such an hypocrite, my granddad. I mean, what was it? Oh, yeah, he was going on about some half fella he messing the plunge ever or something. Yeah, roughly translated, the red line witness. This boring <laughs> story about a fella who wouldn't talk to his daughter because she married a Muslim or something. I mean, what's he like with our Mary? Because, like, she married a Catholic. When did he last speak to her? 1968 or something, wasn't it? I mean, he just wants to listen to himself a few times. Oh, so he reckons he's got you sorted now, does he? No, he just wants me to talk to me dad and go back to swimming, but there's just no way, cos I'm not giving it. Ah, oh, you're right. I waste of time. What is? All that swimming, keeper. I mean, you weren't getting your times, were you? I was. No, you weren't. That what's-her-name was still beating you. No, if I was you, I'd stick to sulking for England. You've got a real talent there. I was beating us all right. You're still there. Look, tell us the truth. It's a wind-up, isn't it? It was you who sent it. Look, swear it, then. You're not crossing nothing, are you? I swear you're not crossing nothing. Look, it, it just says meet you at the anchor 7 o'clock Friday. I don't know, do I? That's what I'm phoning you for. I thought it was you sent it. Look, what am I going to do? Well, you've got to come with me, right? So I'm not going on my own. Yeah. Thanks, love. Thanks, love. Yeah, it's this court case, Frank. Friday, isn't it? Yeah, the sister thinks I should plead guilty with mitigation. Dad, I'm just going down the shops, all right? Sammy, do you know anything about this new 10 pin bowling place? Mick was just asking. Yeah, it's great. Katie said you might be going again soon. At least I think that's what she said. Katie? Yeah? What was that about Sammy, Margaret, and the fellas going bowling again? Nothing. I never said nothing. Wait until yours Honest? gets to this age. You start talking a different language, you know. What's so confusing? It sounds exactly anything. like English. Until you try and work it out, what you just said. Yeah, hey, I might as well risk it. Cheers. Hello, anyone in? Oh, hi. Look, would you put the frozen 
stuff in the freezer for me before it melts, because I've got to dash off to a meeting. I'll put the rest away when I get in. Yeah, we'll do. Bless you. Got time for a bread? Uh, yeah, go on then. Half a cup. Hey, okay, I've booked the holiday. Travellers' checks, tickets, the lot, and there's some terrific bargains around. Where are you going? Tenerife. Self-catering apartment, two weeks in the sun with one week free. And, what do you think? Very nice. Oh, it is, isn't it? It's lovely. I blew all the money I saved on the holiday on that. It'll be art. What will? Tenerife. I hope so. I'll ask for a refund if it isn't. I intend to spend all my time on the beach getting brown doing absolutely nothing. And I'm not going to think about work for once. Head the crop will be just a bad dream I had after a heavy meal. And as for toxic waste campaigns, never heard of them. And I'm not going to do any cooking for the whole fortnight. But I suppose I might graciously condescend to put the kettle on once in a while if it's absolutely necessary. You'll need special sun cream for Thomas. Yeah, it's better. Um, where's those cards? I put them up in the lounge. Oh, for goodness sake. Spin them. Oh, yeah. This came for you. It's a night flight. Nick Thomas will sleep through. It's for you. Oh, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Damn, I'll have to get him something before the meeting. Yeah, forget the coffee. I feel Dad, pretty happy. Dad, you going to the shop? No. Do you want anything? I don't think so, no. All right, then. I'll see you later. I'll see you, mate. See you, son. Tra. <sighs> Peace at last. Anyway, Mick, I just want you to know that whatever you decide, I'm hundred percent behind you. Right? And I'm prepared to say so in court anywhere. Thanks, mate. You see, the solicitor has explained it all, and it's the most sensible thing to do. I can see that. No fuss, no bother. Guilty, Your Honor. Thanks very much, Your Honor. That's it. Next case. What does Josie think? Same as him, basically. Don't rock the boat. It's ironic that I usually think she's going to rock the boat. What do you think? Oh, I don't know, mate. I honestly don't. I don't think I've got any choice, have I? But how the hell to say it? Guilty when you're not. I don't feel any kind of guilt. I feel bloody angry. And if there's any justice in the system, I'll be out that magistrate's court without a stain on my character. Somebody should be paying me compensation. But there isn't, though, Mick, is there? Hey, any justice in the system? Because it's not about justice, is it? It's about rules. They're very fair and everything, but they're not necessarily just. I mean, justice, it's... It's a kind of emotional thing, isn't it? And there's no emotion with the law. It's all cold logic. So what would you do if you was me, Frank? You mean, what would I do or what did I do? Listen, Mick, I've been there, mate. When was this? Oh, years ago. I was on the buildings, you know, in the 60s, working on the lump, moving around the country, Brilliant money. No tax, no insurance contributions, nothing. But yeah, we all had different names. I was John Smith. It's original. <laughs> yeah. Either that or Robert Dillon. I was into Bob Dylan at the time. Anyway, I used to work for the Snatch Gang for extra money. Snatch Gang? Yeah. Sounds like the James Brothers, doesn't it? But it wasn't. It was the most legal outfit of the lot. It was a kind of police force, because there were some right villains used to work on the lump, you know? He used to help themselves to all kinds, like kitchens, enough cable to rewire the houses. Anyway, once the job was finished, the company used to employ us, the Snatch Gang, to go and get it all back. Well, the cables and the kitchens, we couldn't do anything about those. But conservatories, paving stones, fences, stuff like that, we used to just go and uh, rip it all up, take it back, you know? I used to drive the wagon for them. Never knew about this. Oh, I, yeah. Anyway. There was one fella. Now, he was a right thieving swine. He's built himself this little palace out of all the knockoff stuff from the company. And he couldn't sue him because technically he didn't exist. Otherwise, they'd get done for illegal practices or whatever. Anyway, he decides he doesn't want his, you know, garage and his fences and his pavement stones repossessed. So he puts up a bit of a fight. A few people get hurt, bit of blood spilt, and we end up in front of the magistrates. And I'm only driving the wagon. What did you do? Well, I felt exactly like you do, Mick. Because I wasn't the guilty one either. The fellow who robbed the pavement stones, he was the guilty one. He was the biggest tea leaf in the three counties. And there we were, the ones in the dock, the ones that got fined. So what did you plead? Well, guilty. Well, we had to, didn't we? We had no choice. 
We had to keep our heads down and lie through our teeth. Did the tax boys get all there? No, no, because uh, as soon as the company found out we were in trouble with the law, they paid us all above board for the previous four weeks. Then they just sat back, clean as a whistle. Nothing to do with us, mate. We're so pure you could eat your dinner off us. And there we were, the mugs, the ones in the dock, up to our necks in it, charged with ABH, robbing flagstones the lot. i tell you, Mick, there wasn't one word we could say about it, except guilty, your worships. Yeah, between the law and the company, we were completely stitched up. And I'll tell you something else, Mick. If it hadn't been for that, I'd have fought the thing for the principal alone. That's it, innit? So what do you do, eh? Give in for the sake of the family? Or say to hell with it and stick off with the principal of the thing? I don't know how I'm gonna live with myself if I plead guilty, Frank. I don't know how I'm gonna face Josie and the kids if I don't. Join Hugh Fernley Whittingstall for more unusual TV dinners in just a moment on Living. Shh. I suppose it was us. I'm not going to court without my solicitor. Who are you? When? And a bikini. What do you think? And I got this for the evening. Sort of casually dressy. Or dressily casual, whatever I need. Do you know, this is the first proper holiday Max and I have ever had together. How do you know? Well, I can distinctly remember not having gone on holiday with him before. No, I mean, how do you know, like, what to get, you know, clothes and that? Me? You're joking. I'm hopeless. I haven't got the faintest idea, especially with stuff for work. I never know what image I'm supposed to be getting across. You know, designer jeans and silk shirt, or discreet little suit and shoulder pads, or up-to-the-minute trendy. Can't you just be yourself? Well, you tell me what that is. I'll give it a go. <laughs> no, it's image that counts out there. It's what they judge you on, clients and colleagues. You could be the warmest, friendliest human being on the earth, and it wouldn't count for a thing if you got the image wrong. Ooh. Hey, look. I got a sun hat for Thomas, little sailor hat. <laughs> oh, I've written him a list. Isn't it cute? Uh, things for Tenerife. Oh, done it. In the shopping for Tenerife, what do you think this lot is? Yeah, but I've, um, I've written a proper list. So did I. Well, uh, have you got special sun cream? Extra strong filter. Uh, nappies. Smells gorgeous here. How many sniff. packets did you get? Hundreds. We're going to have to charge an extra plane. Uh, insect repellent. Plasters. Plasters. Um, you'll need baby food and cereal and orange juice. We're going on holiday, Margaret. We're not setting up in competition with mother care. <clears throat> insect repellent. You said that. Uh, ointment for his gums. This is like kit inspection in the army. He'll need two tubes. Ointment. Gums for the anointing of. Sir. Well, he'll need two tubes. Goodness me, what a coincidence. And I've got two already. Well, I didn't know, did I? I'm not completely useless, Margaret. I, I didn't... I didn't mean... I can just about fathom out what my own son might need for two weeks away. I'm sorry. I just didn't want him stuck all the way out there without something he needed. I think they've got shops in Tenerife by now. Yeah. Oh, no, look. Let me have a look. Screw it up. It doesn't matter. Let me see. 
well. You'll be glad to know I completely forgot about baby wipes and I never even thought about calamine lotion. Thanks. Where the hell is he? It's no good pacing about blood there. Do you want a coffee or something? No, I choked me. What's he playing at? He'll be here. Uh, they can't start the case without him. Sit down. Suppose he's forgot all about me. Nick, will you sit down? Of course he hasn't forgotten. Sisters never forget. I thought that was all soldiers. No, they never die. It's elephants. What elephants? Oh, is that him? Where? Oh, no. Sorry. He doesn't get here soon. There's not going to be enough time. Enough time for what? I need to talk to him. Nick, you spent hours talking to him. I don't know what to do. Yes, you do, babe. You've been through it over and over again, all the procedure, everything. You could do it backwards. They can't touch you in there. A couple of middle-class, middle-aged do-gooders. What they got to do with us? It's like a pantomime or something. Just say your lines, get up, go home, and we can forget all about it. Forget about it? Do you think it's going to be that easy? Yeah, of course not. I'm just saying, if you get it over... Mr. The... Gent. How should I know? I feel sick. It's nerves. Oh, no, it's nerves. Don't take it out on me. Well, go on. If you're going, go. Oh, God, can I? I miss this fowler fella. Well, I'll be you. I'll hang on to him. And what if they call me name when I've gone? Well, I'll just have to tell him to wait, won't I? Sorry, your worships. He's on the bog. You're only human. Please, magistrate. It's like you and me. They have to go as well, you know. Michael Andrew Johnson. This is it, babe. Sorry. Sorry about this. We got held up in court three. So we're on, are we? They just called us. Right. Hang on. GBH, isn't it? OK, then. Ready? Look, I need a word first. Inside, OK? Don't worry, Mr Johnson. And remember what we said. When they ask you Crown Court or Magistrate's Court, it's Magistrate's Court, right? Michael right. Andrew Johnson. Yeah, but what if I... Sorry, my fault. We're on our way. Don't let them get you, eh? They're only people. Michael Andrew Johnson, is that your full name? Yes. And you live at Six Brookside Close Manor Park, Liverpool? Yes. Date of birth, 12th March, 1958? Yes. And you're represented by Mr. Farley, your solicitor. Are we ready to proceed? This is a matter which can either be dealt with here or at the Crown Court. The court will hear representation relating to an application for mode of trial. Do you understand that? Been swimming? Oh, yeah. This lot's been out since dinner time and it's still not dry. Oh, no, I'm only trying to get the smell of the Claudine house. Oh, you're the one that swims for the club, aren't you? Yeah. You must be good. Not really, no. Like that, well, it used to be quite good, but I haven't been for a while. In no, I just, I just didn't want to. You know, it was dead hard going back today. Everyone's saying hello, stranger, and having to face my coach again. You've got a coach? Oh, not me personally. He's the team coach. All well, my times have gone right down again, so now I'm back to square one. Oh, it's a waste of time anyway, because nobody cares whether to do well or not. And, like, once I told me one about my times, and all she said was, "What do you want for your tea?" Yeah, but you do, don't you, though? I mean, you care. What does it matter what everyone else thinks? You're not doing it for them, you're doing it for you. Yeah, I'm your coach and the team. But it'd just be nice if someone in the family understood how much it matters. But it does matter. You know, like, well done, Jackie, for the change. Well, well done, Jackie, for going back. <laughs> <coughs> 
And not unnaturally, in view of the possible harm that the intruder might have done, either to his property or to his children, Mr. Johnson forcibly prevented the burglar from obtaining access. Now, whether or not in the event my client overstepped the mark of reasonable force is not the question at issue, sir. The point is that the motive for the offence was neither premeditated nor malicious. I think that's all I have to say at this time, sir. Thank you, Mr. Parler. <clears throat> I'd now like to repeat the charge, Mr. Johnson. You are charged under Section 20 of the Offences Against the Persons Act 1861 that on Friday 14th December at Brookside Close, Liverpool, that you, Michael Andrew Johnson, did unlawfully and maliciously inflict grievous bodily harm on Kenneth James Brady. The bench has agreed to try this case summary. You, however, have the right to have the matter dealt with by a jury at the Crown Court. But I must warn you, if the magistrate feels that his powers to deal with you are insufficient, then he would have the power to commit you to Crown Court for sentence. Do you understand that? Yes. The magistrate has decided to try this case summarily. The final decision rests with you. Which do you choose? Do you understand the question, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Which do you choose? To be tried here today or to be tried by a jury at the Crown Court? Well, answer the court, please, Mr. Johnson. The Crown Court. <coughs> Sir, may I confer with my <coughs> client for a moment? I don't need any conferring. I'm not guilty, and I'm going to prove it in front of a jury. Crown Court, Your Honour. Chef? Yeah? Good God. Yeah, go on. Best style, I'll just laugh, shall I? Then we can skip all the gags. What gags? No, no, I was just uh, going to remark on there uh, what a powerful the old one you had on, you know. I mean, I could smell it wafting down the stairs and into the kitchen and into the garden, onto the close and permeating around Manor Park and seeping up Queen's Drive. <coughs> oh, you provide a gas mask, don't you? <laughs> so, uh, where are you going, us? Oh, Dame Edna, come on, what's it look like? That I can do about all like fancy dress gags and all. You mean it's not fancy dress? What is it then? Well, I'm just, um going out with the lads. Well, well, me and Bumper like going out for a, a quick, you know. Walk? Yeah, a, a quick walk, yeah. Oh, I don't know about that, so... I mean, I don't know whether I should allow you, you know, your age, going out looking like that. And, uh, what's this on your chin? Pack nothing. So, uh, all this is to impress Bumper, is it? Well, no, we're, uh, we're meeting a, a... We're meant to see a, a you, you know. Uh, girl? Well, yeah, I think so. Well, you think she's a girl? Yeah, well, well, I mean, no, I, well, I, I don't know if she is or not yet. Listen, son, me and you are going to have to have a little chat and I'm going to give you some good advice. Now, girls, girls, I don't want to be scared. I hope no one's in the bathroom. God, this thing's a toilet cleaner, isn't it? Right, hey, Sam, have a good day. Yeah, I'm going to wash my hair. Yeah, well, I'm just going. I've got to go to Bumpers first, Dad. Who's been messing in my room? Not guilty. Yeah, 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 I'll see you. Jeff, would you use your own room? Dad, Talon. Well, I'm not getting involved. I only live here. That's my T-shirt. I only paid a mortgage. Get it off. Oh, go on, you don't want it. No, and I don't want it to stink in the toilet cleaner either. No way. Look, will you just take it off? What's that on your chin? What, none? You've been messing with me makeup. No, I haven't. Look, look, see that. Jeff, where are you going? Will you take it off? <laughs> Kill it. Don't make too much mess. I've just tied it up in it when your mum comes in. What do you want for your tea? Um, I don't want any tea, thanks, Dad. I'm going out. Oh, yeah? Yeah, um, with some mates from work. Very nice. Yeah, um, listen, Dad, I've got to wash my hair yet. Yeah, I've got to dry it. I've got to get dressed and everything. Come bring us up a cup of tea, could you? Oh, let's impress a few mates from work. Uh, we're going somewhere posh to eat. Don't bust the gut. I can run you into town. Oh, no, it's all right. I've got a taxi coming to pick me up at the end of the post. When? Seven. You've got an hour and a half yet. Oh, God, I'll never be ready. 
You pay a solicitor, Mr. Johnson, to give you advice. Yeah, I know that. Confession is then that you take that advice. Yeah, but... You didn't agree with it. If you wanted to do something contrary to what we'd agreed, then you should have damn well said so up front before we ever got into court. Well, I did. I beg your pardon, Mr. Johnson, but you did not. And listen here, Mr. I mean, what's the point of a solicitor-client relationship if the client completely rejects every bit of advice he's been given and says whatever comes into his head? Oh, come on, it wasn't like that. Let me give you one last piece of advice, Mr. Johnson, for free. And I strongly recommend you to take it this time. Get yourself another solicitor, and a damn good one, because, believe me, you're going to need it. Oh, are you? Pompous old git. Come on, we're going home. I don't like the smell of this place. <laughs> Right, I'll give you your money. Quill, I'm 14. Don't. All right, then, 12. I wish we had one of them identity card things. Yeah, my sister's fella's got him. He's 18. I could probably get a lend of it, you know, if I can get round him. Do you look like him? No, nah, but you don't look that close to him. Look, she's not here. Let's go. How do you know she's not here? You don't even know who she is. Could be that one over there. Well, let's go somewhere else. Well, I could be here. She didn't give me the eye, you know. It's got to be someone who knows me, hasn't it? Did you really think it was me who sent it? I'm just not sure it wasn't. And what am I going to do that for? We've got a bet on, haven't we, meathead? You know, I'm not going to spoil it, like, by sending you a valentine, am I? <laughs> so, um, how many did you get? Yeah. One. How many did you? Two halves, please, love. You can't get a table, will you? <laughs> Go and talk to her. What am I going to say? Oh, go on. I hope you didn't mind. No, no. What? About bringing a friend with me? Oh, oh, no, no. I've brought one of Ollie's. Just getting the drinks. Won't be a minute. Great. He, he's just getting the drinks. He said. Yeah. You didn't mind, did you? About your friends? No, about the Valentine. Oh no. No. Did you guess it was from me? No, I thought it was from Bumper. Bumper? You know my friend Brian Humphreys, Mr. Porter's class. Why would Brian Humphreys send you a Valentine card? Oh no, 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 I mean as a joke. Doc, and right up to the last minutes, I still wasn't 100% sure. It's all right. You don't have to explain. I said to you, I want to. I want you to understand that I didn't do it lightly. I've been thinking about it day and night for the last week. I know. If you want to walk out, I won't blame you. It's my problem, not yours. Don't want you and the kids suffering for it. I wanted to talk to you about it, but I couldn't. I don't know. Would have seemed so weak. Would have felt like I needed your approval before I had the guts to do what I knew was right. Like I was dumping the responsibility for it on you. Good. I'm not doing this very well, am I? Not making much sense. Not a lot, no. I 
Please stop thinking what Fowler said about the jury. Like the moment they saw the color of my skin, I'd be 50% guilty. You know, when I was a kid, about our Leo's age, I used to hide in this little gap between the back of the bike shed and the school wall. Did I ever tell you that? Every break time, every dinner time. And I hated it. I hated not having the guts to come out and face the coon jokes and the vicious little digs and kicks that the teachers never saw. And fat figure with that stupid grin on his face. I ever tell you about fat figure? And suddenly it all stopped. As I started growing. And I was head and shoulders above all the juniors. And no one in that school dared call me anymore. But I haven't forgotten what it felt like. Squashed in that gap, praying that no one would find me. And the smell of it. The stink of pee and exhaust fumes. I'm never going back there. I'm never, ever going to feel like that again. I want to stand up in front of a jury. And I want them to see me for exactly what I am. And then I want them to say, not guilty. Did you ever meet Tony's sister, Eileen? Her fellow, he was in strange ways, robbery with violence. I went with her once to visit him. I don't think I could take it if it was you in there. I don't think... Hey, babe. It's gonna be all right, I promise. I promise you it's gonna be all right. So what did you think? Did you think it could be from somebody else? Yeah, bumpy. No, when, when you saw it was me, did you wish it had been from somebody else? No, no, I mean, if I could have chose, like, like out of everybody. I used to see you every Wednesday, you know, when you had maths in 4JB, and I was waiting in the corridor outside the lab. I used to stare at you. Why? Because I think you look just like Tarquin Tully, out of Meadowcroft Park, the new soap. Do you watch it? I never miss it. Me? Yeah, you look just like him. It's brilliant, Tom. Did you see it at dinner time? You got that tarty Evelyn, you know, thick one, full of makeup and the bows and those stupid yellow stockings. But he got it in the backyard of the pub and told her exactly what he thought of her. You know, like how she was thick to stop following him around and that. Then he slapped her face, but dead good. You think I look like Tarquin? Well, yeah, hasn't anybody ever said? No. Well, well yeah, sometimes. On and off, like. I bet people are always mistaking you for him. Well... Autograph hunters and that. Tarquin wears a jacket like that. You look really nice in that jacket. So do you. You look really nice. Hey, she's a demon of pool, your mate. Anyone fancy another drink? Yeah, I'll have another. Hey, uh, Jeff? No, I'm, uh, all right, thanks. Is there something wrong with your neck? Oh, don't, yeah. Um, Wanna finish the game off then? Yeah, okay. Better beat, yeah. It's great, this, isn't it? Yeah. I think they've clicked, Lorraine and your mate. Did you come here a lot? No, no. We always come on Fridays. They've got live music on Fridays. Oh, we'll probably down here next Friday as well. Really? Yeah. Oh, at the same time? Yeah. Oh, that's when we'll be here as well. Same time next week? Yeah. Come the ladies a minute. Just, just ask if you want to come back next week as well. No, oh, God. Excuse me. Good. How are you doing all right? Apart from getting beaten stupid, yeah. How about you? Yeah. Boomtown bed now neck and neck with Roofmaker. Moonscraper doing everything he can to keep with these two as the favourite left it too late again. 
We'll find out as Moonscraper I'm just... Wait a minute, still please not play. Thanks. Give me a minute. Beginning to Sammy! With a late run, pulling away from Roddy, hope your taxi driver's here. You're flapping around up there since half five. Just behind Boomtown Bed. Boomtown Bed looking easy. Can Moonscraper... Hiya. Hi. Dad, I'll see you later. Hey, hold on Dad, I'll see you later, all right? Sammy! <laughs> More unusual TV dinners coming up after the break. Good morning. Not Windsor's again. Yes, yes, Windsor's again. It's nice to feel welcome, isn't it? Come on. What do you reckon, skirt or trousers? Doesn't matter if you feel like. What are you gonna wear? Dunno. Haven't decided yet. Come on, Sammy. This is our big night out. Nothing's gone wrong, has it? No. Why should it? No. You just don't seem as though you're looking forward to it. Oh, don't tell me. You've not been able to find me a fella. No, oh, there's no problem there. Not with Ronnie's son else. That's one thing Ronnie never did find a problem with, and that was finding fellas. I hope he's dead nice. Good dancer and good looking. Only not so good looking if he fancies himself more than he fancies me. Yeah, well, don't worry, cos Ronnie keeps a really good looking one to herself. <laughs> and I hope he gets serious enough to spend all his money on me, but not so serious he wants to tie me down. <laughs> you don't want much, do you? Well, there's no harm in hoping. <laughs> Show you all right. Yeah, I will be. It's really nice, this blouse. Wouldn't mind one myself. It's not your fella, is it? I mean, nothing's wrong there. No, there's nothing wrong with him. Good, cos I can't wait to meet this mystery man. Look, why'd you call him that? We've not been allowed to meet him yet, have we? Yeah, but you have now. Sammy, what's wrong? Oh, it's just me dad. Anyone would think I was still a kid. If he's anything like my dad, he'll never think anyone's good enough for you. Yeah, but is that any reason to make a show me thinking Tim was a taxi driver? What's wrong with taxi drivers? No, but why do you think I haven't wanted them to meet him, eh? Why do you think I've kept him so mysterious? I don't know. It's because everyone thinks you should be the same. Just because you're 19, you can only go out with someone who's 19. But you're not 19. And then when I get home, it's the third degree. What does he do? How old is he? Do you know what you're doing? Mums and dads are always like that. Yeah, but Margaret, what's wrong with him being older than me, eh? How old is he? 39. Oh, aye. Is that what they call plain clothes these days, is it? Hey, I'm off duty. Yeah, well, you're not. Going out for a well-earned drink. Oh, yeah, you've been out chasing kids all day, have you? Do you know what? I've been keeping the streets safe for the likes of you. Do you want this or not? Oh, it's a bit hot at the moment, isn't it? Why don't you just leave it on the drain board for a while to cool off? I'll tell you what you can do. You can put the kettle on and make a nice cup of tea. Don't get lost. All right. To my darling Rod from your one and only. Hey, put that back. Talk about anonymous. We all know who the one and only is, don't we? You're just jealous. 
She's really got a close into you, hasn't she, Rod? Hey, nine cards, mate. That was between the both of us, like. Five for me and four for him. All ears were from all women for doing the hair. Yeah, well, do you know how many I got this year? None. And all yours were from your mates from work. Yeah, no one remembered me. You're too old for Valentine's. What do you mean I'm too old for Valentine's? You're never too old for Valentine's. Even your Jimmy got one. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> how do you know? Cos he sent it. Rod's idea of a joke. Did you? <laughs> I'll wait till I see him. And you know what he's done? He's stuck it up on the wall so I can see it as well. <laughs> How's it going, anyway, near the new place? Oh, don't ask. I tell you, he just drops his things all over the place. If I didn't run round after him, he'd have it like a tip. Wouldn't fancy sharing the flat with Jimmy's socks. Yeah, well, it's not just the socks, is it? It's all the other junk. His bony MLPs, all kinds of plants and books. Books? Didn't know Jimmy read books. No, he doesn't. He meant, you know, the stock and trade. Yeah, stock and trade, like, but there's not much trade, is there? He yeah, asked him. Recycle then for next year if you want. Hey, I could do, couldn't I? Yeah. Hey, I could crack onto your Jimmy that they were mine and they were sent to the wrong address. No, it's too late. He's already seen them. Anyway, come on, Simbad. I've got things to do, even if you haven't. Yeah, gotta go. See you later. Sit down. Oh, well, you're never gonna get the dirt off with that. What's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It's not hot enough. That's what's wrong with it. You should have put the kettle on when I said. If you'd have done that, it would have been hot, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think I'll stick with the cream. Yeah, well, you can't go wrong with cream. I can never decide whether I want to be really flashy or just blend into the background. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter just how you feel. It's easy for you. You're going with someone you know. <laughs> it's not easy. You still want to look nice. This is all right, this. You can borrow it if you like. No, I mean, when you're with someone you know, it's harder. I mean, if your fella doesn't like what you're wearing, so what? Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be other lads there, isn't there, apart from the one your mate brings. I know if you're with someone that matters, I mean, you want to look your best, don't you? And Tim's used to people looking smart. So, is it serious then between you and Tim? Oh, I don't know. It's early days, yeah. But it could get serious. Yeah, but it's not easy. I mean, for a start, he's got a better job than I have. Would you like it to get serious? Well, look, don't you start giving me stick. I get enough from me dad. I'm not giving you stick. Just he's a bit old. Look, that doesn't matter. You haven't even met him yet. <laughs> no. But I soon will. Yeah, you will. And then you'll see that the age difference, it doesn't matter. Does your dad know how old he is? Not exactly, no. But he's got a good idea. I mean, he didn't even give Tim a chance. And he doesn't know I'm going out with him tonight. Like, he just thinks I'm going out with you lot. Well, I won't say anything. Thanks. Stupid, really. I mean, my mum and dad were always going on about me going out with this lad who I couldn't stand. And your mum and dad won't let you go out with the bloke you really fancy. I know, it makes you think with the ever young. <laughs> anyway, are you trying that on? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind. You're welcome. See you later. See you later. Oh, sorry. Here you are. <clears throat> you look worn out. Oh, thanks. I've not been sleeping much. You're telling me you were tossing and turning all night? Oh, sorry. Did I keep you awake? What do you think? I want me to sleep in here. I always get a mattress. What are you doing that for? Don't want to bother you. You know me, I could see through anything. I know you think I did the wrong thing by pleading not guilty. I only want what's best for you. I only want what's best for you and all, babe. You and the kids. Getting all this business over with quicks, what's best for us? What, by pleading guilty? I couldn't do it, though. Not when it came to it. Save all that business for the courts. Don't you get fed up with me. I'm not causing you grief. I suppose you're doing what you think's right. I am, Jose. I really am. There's worse things than being a fool in there. Like being a coward. I hope I'm not that. Or not knowing your own mind. Or not having the guts to speak out. What are you saying, Jose? I'm saying I might not agree with you, but it doesn't stop me admiring you. Nice motor. Glad you like it. I wouldn't mind it staying that way. Sorry? If you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Somebody poorly, is there? Oh, I hope not. Insurance, then. Let's just say I'm giving someone a lift. Give you their car or down if you like. No, thanks. You sure? Reasonable rate tonight, you know. I'd stick to windows if I were you. 
Well, did you not hey, know? Hey, I want a word with you about my windows. See what I mean? It's the corners. You keep missing them. We just pulled ears, Jules. I don't know. All right, mate. Sorry, sir. Well, he's not the doctor. He's not the insurance man, but he has got a nice line in cars. A friend of Chrissy's. Very nice. Tell you what, but this cost him a few shillings. Well, if he is a friend of Chrissy's, all I can say is lucky Chrissy. Yeah, well, pity he doesn't look after it better, doesn't he? Maria. Hello. Um, you really? Oh, I couldn't wait to see you. Is something the matter? No. Oh, come on, I know there is. I'm just worried in case my mum comes in. <laughs> well, why should that matter? Look, it's my mum and dad. They're not pleased about me going out with you. I thought you said they were all right about it. No, they are generally. Well, my mum is. It's just my dad. He's just a bit old-fashioned, that's all. <laughs> Wait till they get to know me. Well, that'll make it worse. <laughs> oh, thanks for the compliment. No, I didn't mean... Oh, you know I didn't mean that. Well, what then? It's because you're older than me. Oh, look, does that matter to you? No. It doesn't matter to me either. Look, Sammy, it's what you think that counts. What you and me think. But you know what I think. Well, then. I'm still only 17. Nearly 18. And old enough to try and stop living your life for other people. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, well, and you can start tonight. Go and get your glad rags on and let's go out and have a good time. OK. Mate. Ready for this. Do you want to shut down? Nah, no thanks. Been doing nothing else all day. What's well, surveillance like? Yeah, in a place like this, if they couldn't touch the ale. Feels like I've overdosed on orange juice. Yeah, don't talk to me about surveillance. I've done me fair share. The worst thing is, right, is when you can't talk to nobody about it. Well, I accept your mates. Yeah, I used to say I was going round to Tomo's. I used to say I was coming round to ours. I said it that often. It's one that people didn't think we had something going on. <laughs> hey, you, uh, you did a good job with that dog fighting mob you and Tomo. Yeah, do you think so? Yeah. I only hope to get sent down for a long time, now. So, are you onto something, then? Well, I hope so. Fencing. Fencing, yeah. In the pub? Yeah. Problem's proving it, though. Yeah, got to see it happening, haven't you? The only one standing about wasn't so boring, though. No, it's not what you'd expect when you join. I thought it'd all be like car chases and saving people's lives and everything, you know? <laughs> You've been watching too much telly, you haven't I think you? I have. Yeah. Sorry, Bye. man. Stupid. I told you, he's a good mate, so Gary's. Just not too good at telling the time. Uh, we could always go in. We don't want to go in, we're not a fella, do you? No, as Ark, is it? Look, I'm sure he'd be here in a minute, won't he? Oh, that music's brilliant. <laughs> it's loud, anyway. That looks really good on you, that wrong. Hey, it should do. It cost me a week's wage, is this? She works in an office. Boring. It is it all. All right, have a nice. nice. I miss my bus. Well, I didn't miss it. It just wouldn't stop. He saw me coming and he just drove off. That's why I'm sweating. Hey, that's nothing to what you will be when she gets you dancing. This is Marcus. Great. Are we going in then, Olaf? Um, this is Tim. Hello. We're going to have a great night, aren't we? We can have a kissy then. First round on me. So are you right? Are you? You're collecting early anyway. I thought Friday was payday. Yeah, well, it is normally, but I've got a little problem. You see, the cash flow. 
He means that unless you pay him, he'll have no money to go on the ale tonight. Hey, I thought you said your husband wasn't in. Hey! Uh, well, you know what we'll lose, mate, don't you? Those uh, self employed businessmen and all that. Yeah, it's a headache. It's oh. cheaper to stop in and watch the telly. Yeah, would well, you stop in if you'd have to share a place with Jimmy Corkle? I'd make sure I didn't share a place with Jimmy Corkle. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm going to pay the rent some way, haven't I? You should try another car boot sale. That's where this came from. What, car boot sale? Ooh, we've got bigger plans than that, missus. Right. Well, we're chain of stores, is it? Hey, we're starting off where Marks and Sparks started off, mate, a market stall. How did you do that then? Well, you find out what the people want, you get your stock and book a pitch. Of course, uh, you've got to have the personality. Things don't sell themselves, you know what I mean? <laughs> gonna be a con, mate, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, I tell you, mate, it's gonna be a little gold mine if you get it sorted out right. And don't worry, if I do have to jib the windows, I'll give you plenty of notice, all right? I'm losing sleep, don't I? Yeah. Hey, thanks for this, Josie. Thank you. What for? Nothing. Oh, well. See you, Mick. All right, see you soon. ta -da. ta -da. What do you think of that idea, then? Shh. Do you think I got the right personality for a market stall? I'm not enough, aren't I? Me and Marcia could do a double act. <sighs> I've forgotten what I'm up to now. Does it come to enough? That's all we need to know. Well, enough to pay the settle, yeah, and enough to pay the rent but nowhere near enough to keep up the payments on this lot. Don't worry, I'll see to that. Mind you, it'd be a bit of time before we catch up with M&S. I mean, we're all right for money while I'm working, but what happens if I can't? If you're sent down, you mean? Could happen, babe. We just have to make sure it doesn't. How can we do that? We'll get you a really good lawyer, somebody who believes you did right, and get a jury to believe it. And go to work. Well, last two, aren't they? We can't have the kids without a dad again. It's only for the kids. Of course, it's not only for the kids. Sometimes, when I see you looking at other books. No, I'm looking, is there? Like that fellow this morning. Well, he was worth looking at, wasn't he? It's only a bit of fun. Not much fun around here at the moment, is it? Well, we'll have to make it fun then, won't we? Do you want me to take you to the park and push you on the swings? I oh, don't be soft. We're in this together, aren't we? Yeah. So stop worrying, will you? She's a good dancer, isn't she? Yeah, she wants to be a dancer, but she starts too late. All I ever wanted to do was work with kids. Tell you what, I'll tell you fortune. No, you're all right. I'm going to meet this great lad. Oh. You're going to fall madly in love with him. I don't think so. We're going to go out on loads of dates together. Um, is that fortune telling or wishful thinking, mate? But first of all, you're going to dance until you drop. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Makes you thirsty. We haven't come just to sit here, have we? Uh, you can put the tile on it. Looks empty to me. I wonder how that happened. Have one on me. Hey. He's all right, isn't he? Not bad for an OAP. You sure you're all right? I will be, as long as my eardrums last out. Listen, I didn't know what he was bringing, you know. Looks like Margaret didn't either. Oh, she should be all right. She knows how to look after herself. No, but you sure you're all right? It's nice to meet your friends. Well, some of them. It'd be even nicer to be alone with you, though. Yes, yeah, it's me. Do you fancy coming away with me? What? Do you fancy coming away for the weekend? How do you mean? Well, we might as well take advantage of the perks of the job. How about spending a weekend of luxury living in one of the hotels of the chain? Yeah, but does that mean what I think it means? That's up to you. Look, I don't want to push it, but I know what I want. God, what's happened to you? Some idiot in the pub. Seems he doesn't like policemen. Got a grudge or something. So he thought he'd take it out on one. And you let him? Well, it wasn't a question of letting. I mean, I didn't even see him. He came from behind. I thought you were supposed to have eyes in the back of your head. Yeah, and I thought we were supposed to be having a quiet drink. I mean, that was supposed to be a safe pub. Are you all right? Yeah, I've had him looked at. Took him down to casualty. We have to wait for ages. This is me mate Mark from work. This is me sister Tracy. Make us a cup of tea, Trace. What do you think I am like? Didn't think it was your mother. No, just his servant. Did you get them anyway? Nah, no chance they're on. 
so shouldn't you be out arresting them or something? I took him down, Neil. What more do you want? Oh, I see. So these no marks are going to get away with it. I mean, look what they've done to our rod. Come on, it happens all the time. So it doesn't matter if some divvy lays into a policeman. Well, of course it matters. We were off duty anyway. Rod, it doesn't make any difference. Look at the state of you. Look, one of the things you learn in our job is what's worth bothering about. And our rod isn't. Look, this guy that hit him. We haven't got much idea what he looks like, and we've no idea where he is. Yeah, I mean, the place was empty. Nobody knew him. Nobody saw him. They couldn't be bothered getting involved, you mean? Yeah, so what are we supposed to do? I mean, put out a nationwide alert. And you couldn't be bothered with the paperwork. You know what all this means, don't you, mate? What's that? You'll be on sick leave till that lock clears up. Great. Only one thing I need now. What's that? Bit of tender love and care. <laughs> Right, uh, we're off. Where are you going? You're going for a meal? Hey, you can go crisps with peanuts here, you know. A proper meal, if you know what that was. Where are you going? Chinatown. And look, I'll see you. Bye. 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 He's only showing up. Flashing his money around. Well, you shouldn't complain. I mean, you flash plenty of it at you. Must be like going out with your dad, really. Where is this dope? You're taking off for a decent meal. Well, that's not why she's doing it. Is he your boss then or something? Well, she messed up quick. But that's not the point, is it? She's really into it. Anyway, what are we doing? Dancing? Come on. We could go on somewhere else. Somewhere with cheap drinks. Well, you can come to us, like. Didn't you say those people you work for are away? Yeah. Oh, great. We can go around there, then. Mm, yeah. Half empty, half say. Just what we're looking for. You can't. I mean, they left me in charge of it. It's only for us. We're not going to invite anybody else. Not this time, anyway. You can't. Why not? Well, I promised. I mean, it's not my house, is it? Well, you live there, don't you? Yeah. Well, then. Eh? You just can't. I mean, it'd be like if I barged into your work. If I let you come, I'll lose my job. Hey, who's your friend? You look terrible, Rod. What happened? Oh, oh, I'll be all right. Just take a bit of time, you know. He's not dying, you know, Diana. He's got a black eye and a cut cheek, and it was his own fault. Oh, that's not fair. He was just standing there. He's yeah, shouting his mouth off. I brought you a prezi. Oh. oh, God, it looks like it's been around a bit. I had to bring it from our house. What can you get at this time of night? You can't come visit in the sick without a prezi. Is she always like this? Oh, Rod. Do you want some? Yeah. I've just made him some coffee. Well, he should have plenty to drink. It's good for shock. He could do with some ice. He could do with a tribe of servants. Are you a nurse or something? Yeah, no, she works in the chemists. Pharmacists. She'd probably be not even able with her tomorrow. Where does it hurt, Rod? Yeah, well, does me eye there, you know? And my cheekbone. And uh, I fell against the bar and banged my elbow, you know? Oh, well, let's have a look. Oh, just there. Uh, isn't this a bit private? Oh. Don't worry, I don't think she knows how to get any further than his elbow. <laughs> well, what's it do if she did? Yeah. Have you got any more of these? We've got to make them comfortable. You know what, Rod? I'm surprised they let you out of hospital. Oh, no, I had to guarantee he'd be well cared for before they let him out. Look, um. Well, I'm sorry if I was a bit of a knock before. Yeah, thanks for looking after him anyway. It's all right, it's my mate, isn't he? Yeah, I know, but I must have spoiled your evening. I wouldn't say that. Well, it didn't exactly turn out to be a quiet night in the pub, did it? No, um, there are compensations. Tasty TV dinners coming up in just a moment.
clean as car in Liverpool, lad. I'm surprised it's taken you long enough. Isn't it about time you had a go at yours, then? I've got other things to do, haven't I? Business booming, is it, yeah? As a matter of fact, yes, it is. I've got loads of regulars now, and we always get specials and that. You know, some of us can't take days off work just because we've got a scratch on our face. Yeah, uh, scratch? I can't go to work with an injury. Oh, just in case people realise that you're really human? No, because the public don't like seeing chewed up coppers, do they? Hey, get that, will you? What do you think I am like? It'll be Diana. Oh, I bet it will. She can't keep away, can she? Go on, then. Let her in. Why do you let her in? She's your girlfriend. I can't let her see me up and about. She thinks I'm really ill. That's what you wanted to think, don't you? Oh, do you know what? Oh, my head's really throbbing. I think I'm getting a headache. Oh, you should have been on the stage. Do you know what? If I get a concussion, you'll be sorry. Will I? All right. What are you doing on your feet? Um, got to keep the muscles moving, you know. You shouldn't have let him get off that couch. I couldn't stop him. Get back there at once. All right. You know what, it's funny how he does exactly what you say, but they don't take a blind bit of notice of me. Can't be too careful with head wounds. What's that bucket doing here? Oh, we're uh, nothing. Oh, we haven't been clever enough, have we, Rod? You haven't been feeling sick, have you? Not till you came. Yeah, well, I'm feeling a little bit better now, you know. I thought we'd try it on some warm milk. I don't like warm milk. It's good for you. And I thought I'd do your washing for you while I was here. Oh. oh, there's no need for that. He can do that himself. Oh, Tracy. Hello, love. Um, I want some eggs. Please? Please. What does she want? White ones, brown ones, square ones, round ones? Dad, whatever you've got. Jackie. Oh, I, yeah, and a tin of peas as well. Hello? You're not a stranger here, are you? Eh, uh, no. You know how it is when you ask anybody the way. It always turns out that they've never been here before, either. Oh, you don't like this town because I live here. Great. It's Chrissy Rogers I'm looking for. I can't seem to sort out the way these houses are numbered. Um... No problem, love. It's over there, number five. God, Dad, she asked me. She only trying to help. Oh, can't I even open my mouth nowadays unless you say I can? Thanks for your help, both of you. That's what we're here for. So, is that it, then? Yeah, yeah. Tell your mother I'll be in soon. Awkward age, isn't it? Yeah, it is. your helpful neighbours. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you cared. Oh, well, I was trying to have a tidy round. I thought I'd left it tidy this morning. You should have seen the state of it when I got in. I don't know why you bothered seeing the tit we used to live in when we were at college. Oh, yeah. It's all right when you're a student, though, isn't it? As soon as you're married, you're supposed to be house proud. <laughs> I'm still working on that. Give you a coat. Do you want a cup of tea? Oh, it saved my life. Tough day at school. Oh, I know what you mean. You've heard about kicking the cat, haven't you? Oh, just show me the cat. In our school, it's the secretary who's the cat. I thought you liked the job. Oh, yeah, I do. But what with work and then home? Sometimes I think if I see another 15-year-old again, I'll kill them. <laughs> I know how you feel. I think your neighbour does, too. Oh, which neighbour? Um, the fellow with the funny van. Oh, Ron Dixon, yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. This youngest lad is a right little tear away. It's not the lad that seems to be the problem. It's his daughter. Can't speak a civil word. Typical. Uh, I should go out of it. You must be glad Sammy's turned out so well. Mm, yeah. We can't have fish fingers because the kids don't like fish. We can't have sausages because Mick thinks it's bad for his art. And we can't have a castro. There's no time to cook it. No. Uh, how about a tin of ham? Dear, and if it's not Sunday. Same price all week, look. Hey, maybe I should offer a menu service. Suggestions for meals with all the ingredients in one package. <laughs> You'd be on to a winner if you did that, I can tell you. Every morning when I wake up, the first thought in my mind is what are we going to have for tea today? Seems like a waste of brain power to me. You're telling me. And then they ask why women don't rule the world. Oh, it's the best bit of the day, this, before the mob comes home. Why do you think I suggest we come in and run after school? 
But we should have a bit of peace tonight. Our Jeff's train and Katie's gone around to Siobhan's. Well, if I go straight home, my lot won't lift a finger. They just sit there with their mouths open like little birds. <laughs> but if I'm not there, it's surprising how well they can find their way around the kitchen. Yeah, well, they can when the hunger gets to them. Mind you, the place will be blitzed. There won't be a slice of bread in sight when I get back. Do you know, it's cornflakes at the moment with our Katie. She has two bowls the minute she comes in from school. We spoil them, really, don't we? Mm. I know I have. Well, it's second shift, isn't it? The job a woman does when she comes home from work. You have to wait on your fellow because he's been working. Yeah, and then when he isn't, you wait on him because you don't want to hurt his pride. You've had some of that, have you? Hmm, on and off. At least teaching's a steady job. And trucking isn't? Oh, it's not Frank's fault. Well, of course not, but it can't be easy. Yeah, doesn't do to men, though, does it? Why not? I'm on about <laughs> Nigel all the time. It's what keeps me sane, <laughs> especially when him and the three lads all get together. <laughs> You're lucky having girls. Not so sure about that. Even if your Sammy did come a bit early. Yeah. You know, one of our friends got pregnant last year in school. She had an abortion. Oh, Sammy asked me if I wanted all my babies. What did you say? I lied. Well, you couldn't tell her the truth, could you? Not with it being her. Oh, I don't know. Do you think we protect them too much? I mean, does it do them any good if they think our lives have been that easy? They'll find out life's tough soon enough. Yeah, well, our Sammy can add up. She must know Frank and I were only married six months before she was born. Then she doesn't want to know. People don't bother about things like that these days. They did then. I thought my mother had killed me. I'm sure my dad had killed Frank. <laughs> At least you got married. Oh, yeah. Registry office in January. It was painted Corporation Green and all the paper chains they take down for Christmas were all piled in the corner. Sounds awful. It was. It was pouring down with rain and I had morning sickness. It's not what you expect, really, is it? So it is that matters, isn't it? Mm. Oh, you should have seen me. I was wearing my winter coat. It was brown. And my grandma bought carnation buttonholes for Frank and I. I'd always fancied a long white frock myself. White frock would be cold in January. Yeah, but then I'd always fancied June. It's only a day. Mm. We all went back to my auntie's then for a reception. It was sausage rolls, sherry. My mother wouldn't even look at me. My uncle Eddie had to keep my dad away from the drinks cabinet to make sure he behaved himself. That can happen at any sort of wedding. No. Uh, it was a weekend in Morecambe then. I'm back to two rooms and a shared kitchen. You're all right now, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, we've worked hard. And Frank was the right one for you, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, of course he was, yeah. Right, love, anything else? Not unless you've got a spare copy of the Mersey Mart. We don't do papers. It's an idea, though. No, not to buy, just to borrow. No, love. I generally have one in my pocket, but I uh, must have left it in the house. You could do with advertising some of this stuff. Some people buy anything, you know. Well, there. I'm not selling any of that gear. You never know when it might come in handy. Looks like you were into recycling before recycling was invented. Listen, why buy when there's no need? What you don't use, you can always swap. Doing it for the sake of the environment, are you? <laughs> That's not what Max Farnham would say. <laughs> They are, love. That'll keep the wolf from the door. Uh, till tomorrow. 420, that gal. Ugh. Money goes nowhere, does it? Slips through your fingers. Oh, you say that again. Oh, are you, Jack? I uh, haven't seen you around for a bit. No, I haven't been going out lately. You all right? Yeah. They are, love. 40. This is a fiver. OK. Mick, all right, is he? Would be if you stopped worrying. He's got nothing to worry about. God, he did the right thing. We all know that. I only hope a jury will see it that way. Should be given him a medal. <laughs> all he was doing was defending his family. What's a fellow supposed to do? He did it, him, though. Harder than he should. Well, he was upset, wasn't he, love? He didn't know what he was doing. Sometimes people don't know what they're doing when they're upset. It was because of the kids. He couldn't stand the thought of some fellow hurting his kids. I know what he means. You do all sorts to look after your kids, don't you? Even if it is no, it's the right thing. Blood's thicker than water. Yeah, it is. You gotta stick together, and you. I don't really agree with what Mick's doing, going to the Crown Court and that. But you gotta stick behind somebody when they're in trouble, don't you? Especially then. What's families for? I mean, you have your differences, but in the end, you make up. Yes, we hope so. Best bit sometimes making up. <laughs> Thanks for this. Anytime, love. Thanks a lot. Bye. So, uh, Dad, you want beans? Oh, sorry about that. Oh, it's all right. It's my fault. No, we all make mistakes. Yeah. You know, if I could go back, I would. Dad, I've got enough. I know, Jack, but you're still my little girl. Yeah, and it's my life. I was only trying to look after you, love. You got it wrong. I said I was sorry. Yeah. 
actually, I'll be sorry the rest of my life. So, you getting those tins of beans or what? One tin of beans? Coming up. Yo! Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Today? No, why should I? I just thought they might be wondering how you are. Do you know how I am? I'm off Phil. What about Mark? You know, with them looking after you and that. Mark, is it? Didn't know you knew him that well. Don't be stupid. Oh, don't tell me you fancy him. I just thought it was nice of him to bring you home, that's all. Don't usually take an interest in people from work. I don't usually know them, do I? You know Tomo? Him. See what I mean? Well, if Tomo had been in the pub with you, he would have left you lying. Hey, Tomo's a good mate. Jump beans or peas? Oh, hey, it's not egg and chips again, is it? You'd be thankful I'm cooking you anything. Do you know what? I remember when Sheila used to make us shepherd's pie and all that. Well, Sheila's not here, is she? So you just have to make do with me. You should have a balanced diet, you know. You should be taking vitamins. I'm sure you could bring him some from the pharmacy. I'll bring you some from the shop tomorrow. Great. Hey, if you've got my stuff there. No, why should I have? Well, I just thought, you know, you're being so keen. Oh, no, it's Rod of come to look after. He's the invalid, isn't he? Funny to think that you've got a grown-up daughter. I sometimes have this nightmare that my lads will never grow up. Oh, Sammy's not grown up. You and me weren't much older than her when we went to college. No, oh, she's only 17. She's left school, started work. Oh, she's too young to settle down. She's not thinking of it, is she? Oh, I hope not. Depends who it is, I suppose. No, I don't want to throw her life away. It won't be like it was for you, Chrissy. Girls don't have to have babies if they don't want to. Our Sammy's seen this man, and he's twice her age. Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, what if he wants to settle down? What if he persuades her? It might not be what he wants. Flash car, plenty of money. Could easily turn off Sammy's head. Oh, I, I wanted to get a good job and travel, go out with lots of men. And then when she does settle down, she won't wonder what she's missing then, will she? It's not all that wonderful being single, Chrissy. It's better than being stuck behind a pram before you're 20. Better than changing dirty nappies. Sometimes I feel as if I was never young. You can still do lots of things. Yeah, well, I thought I could, but I was wrong. <laughs> Travel and that. My mum and dad have been everywhere since my dad retired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose I could do that. I could travel, see the world. The rest I'm too late for. It's not too late for that either. Yes, it is. If you're careful. No, I mean, it is for me. I tried it once. What? Another man? Yeah. And it didn't get very far. What happened? Oh, I stopped it. it. Got too dangerous. In case Frank found out. Oh, no. No, it wasn't that. I mean, Frank's not suspicious. He trusts me. You can't hurt somebody who trusts you, can you? You won't tell Nigel, will you? Of course I won't. I know I should never have started it, but, um,. Well, you do all sorts of things when you're in a state, don't you? So, Sammy, we're having problems. Frank just fell to pieces. I needed somebody who would help, somebody who understood. Yeah. His name was Joe. And Joe didn't expect me to be strong. He didn't mind if I got upset. Easier if it's not your family. Oh, yeah. Well, that was part of it, I suppose. Somebody who was outside the home, away from all the work and the worry. It's going to sound stupid. Uh, we had this kite, and we used to take it flying in the park, and we went to the pictures in the afternoon. How long is it since you went to the pictures in the afternoon? Sounds like a couple of kids. Well, we were in a way. That was part of it. 
It was like, you know, I could be young again. Here I am, Chrissy Rogers, you know, wife of Frank, mother of three. Strong, reliable, the one who copes. And Joe reminded me that I wasn't just that. He reminded me that I could be Chrissy Morgan. Remember her? The girl who was always good for a laugh. The girl who danced on tables. At the college Christmas party. I'll never forget that. <laughs> no, but I had. I'd forgotten that I could be reckless. I'd forgotten that I could even have fun. Why did you give Joe up? Where would it have stopped? Oh, it... at first it was all right. Joe and I, just a bit of fun. And then I began to think about having fun all the time. I began to think about starting all over again. That's when it got dangerous. Yeah. I might want to be young again, but I know I can't. And what I've missed, I've missed. Here yeah, I go. I finally run it to her. It was under two pair of footy boots, a mile eye pile of comics, and a mound of chewing gum wrappers. <laughs> you think they're selling something then? Well, not something of ours. We just got enough as it is. I might take a stall in the market with my mate Marcia. Hey, that's a good idea. Can be a little gold mine if you sell the right things, you know. Yeah. Mind you, you're going to need some working capital, you know, Joe. At least 100 quid. Before we start? Well, you've got to buy before you sell, haven't you? And don't forget, it might take a couple of weeks before people get to know you're there. So don't go giving up if it doesn't take off at a bank. Where am I going to get hundred pounds from? You can always earn it. How about boxing shoes? Like boxing kangaroos, is it? No, yeah, plant pot. Real shoes. Oh. Outwork for this shoe firm. Someone asked me if I wanted to do it. What do you do? Do you drop me off a crate of shoes, you pair them up, box them, then it's down to you? The more you do, the more you earn. And I could do that at home, couldn't I? No babysitting problems. It's a hard graft, though, Jules. Oh, I don't mind work. No one is for setting up my own business. <laughs> I can see we're going to have to watch you, madam. You'll be taking over the Moby when I get my shop. That's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? I think I'll go back on the couch. Yeah, I think you should. Hey, Diana, he can walk, you know. Does Eddie bang on his legs? He could have a dizzy spell. You don't know what's happened inside his head. Well, if it's the same as usual, not much. You know, Tracy, you might make a very good hairdresser, but you'd make a terrible nurse. You know what, Diana? I think you might just be right. See, that's what it's like having a little sister. Aren't you glad you haven't got one? I've always wanted a big brother. Oh, look what you've done. But can't you put this stuff somewhere else? He needs air, doesn't he? Well, that's the worst thing you can do, that, sleep in a damp bed. Is this what you two talk about when you're on your own? We talk about our work. And about our holidays. Oh, marvellous. No wonder you're enjoying yourselves now. You're just jealous cos you haven't got a boyfriend. Who says I haven't? Hi, Frank. Nice motor. Yes, well looked after. Say that again. Tell me what you're doing well keeping this on the road, son. Well, I didn't know to make them when I got this, you know. I'll last a lot of the stuff to make these days. Yeah, I'll outlast the Moby, that's for sure. Still, won't be needing that much longer. I've got one of them new shops down the back. Very nice. I suppose it won't be everyone's ambition, isn't it? Owning their own business. Wasn't my mate, I can tell you. Mine was a steady job, pick up the wages, bring up the family and collect the gold watch. Ah, it doesn't always work out like that, does it? No. Only when it looked like there wasn't going to be any gold watches, I thought, right, Ronald, out you go. I took the money, you know, volunteer redundancy. Well, best of the other sort. Why have you had some of that? Oh, why? More than once. Yeah. Would have happened to me, actually, if I'd have hung on. I was in frozen foods. Don't want to get out. Yeah. The Moby's doing all right as well, you know. Well, you're not likely to be thrown out of a grocery shop, are you? I mean, people have got to eat. That's what I thought. That and like, I still had one or two mates who passed a few things on, you know what I mean? Very nice. So we settled here now, then? Oh, yeah. The wife loves the house. All the neighbours are friendly enough. Well, apart from him next door, you know. Oh, well, I'm taking no notice of him, you know. Yeah. Actually, I thought the kids were getting friendly at one time. Oh, Michael seems to have his eye on your eldest. Sammy, I wish he had. <laughs> I bet you don't. I wouldn't trust our Michael unless I could see him. Who can you trust? Oh, hey. jump me, Key. 
Anyway, nothing to do with us, is it? These days, they get to that age, they make their own minds up. Sue, yeah. I wonder if I dropped it somewhere. Is it in the car? Oh, no, not my car key, you know. My house key, you know. Oh, your yeah, house key. I'll tell you what, Ron. I'll see you then. I'll go down the back anyway. All right, Frank, yeah. See you, Take it easy. See ya. Do you want another cup of tea, Gina? Oh, no, Chrissy. It's time I got back. Oh, are you sure? Yeah. My bag's full of work. You don't still wish you'd ended up being a teacher, do you? Well, it was what I always wanted, you know. Hard work, low pay, no thanks. You're not missing much, you know. Oh, I miss being involved with the children, really. You know, watching them learn, the way they looked at you. It's not always like that. Oh, I know. But it can be, though, can't it? You know, I see one of the teachers walking down the corridor and one of the kids races up wanting something and, well, I just wish it could be me, really. The kids must come to you, too. Oh, they do. Because I'm the one who's got extra paper. I know how to work the photocopier. I'm not someone they really relate to. You'd have made a good teacher. You're one of the best in our year. Well, it wasn't to be, was it? I wonder where you'd be if you hadn't got married. Deputy head by now, on your way to head teacher. No chance. Come on, you know you have what it takes. Oh, well. It's too late now, isn't it? You're wasted, Chrissy. Chris? You know that. Oh, I didn't see you there. I forgot my key. I I'm just off. Well, it was nice to see you again, anyway. Another time. Bye, Frank. Thanks for the tea. And a sympathy. I'll give you a call, Jim. Sorry. Enjoyed yourself, have you? I didn't expect you. I come home specially to talk to you. I'll be going mad all day worrying about our Sammy. And so have I. Didn't sound like it to me. But it was because of Sammy. She's going around with a bloke twice her age. Don't you care about that? Well, you, you know I care. It didn't sound like it to me. Sammy's our daughter, our responsibility. She could be ruining her life. Well, don't you think I know that? And all you can do, Chris, all you can do is talk about yourself. A delectable tea party with the china brought out of cold storage next, including savouries, scones and sponges in TV dinners 